You're the expert. How would you go about improving the Project Daedalus vessel? Well, I think the first problem that we have to address with the Daedalus design was the choice of fuel. And I talked about that last year at the symposium, and mm -hmm. I'm uh, going to talk about it briefly again this year. But um, the Daedalus vessel used deuterium and helium-3, and we can't get the helium-3 here on Earth. So um, we're looking at alternative fuel sources there. Uh, one of the other problems that uh, we have in terms of Project Icarus with the Daedalus design was that with Icarus we're trying to decelerate fully into the target star and yet with the Daedalus design it used tritium cores on the pellets uh -huh. and those have a half-life of about 12 years so they would all pretty much be gone by the time we got to the deceleration <laughs> phase. That would not be so good. No, that no. would be bad. So we're looking at alternatives for the cores of the pellets. And what are those alternatives? Um, Ultra-dense deuterium is one of the ones that um, we're particularly fond of right now and okay. trying to figure out how to make that one work. Um, there are other alternatives as well. Like, um, Why is that the leading alternative? It has the most energy density uh -huh. and um, I mean the deuterium is already compressed significantly so that it takes a lot less energy to get the pellets to ignite. So it's really kind of interesting from that standpoint. And also the, the pellets that we're looking at already have deuterium in them so you don't have any kind of uh, reactions among the core and the outer part of the shell, so that's good. Um, one of the other issues that we're trying to uh, figure out how to address, though, is one of compression symmetry. Okay. Um, in the original Daedalus design, they used a ring of uh, electron beams to compress the pellet, and um, these, you know, because the, the shell was actually open at one end, uh, we only had the electron beams on pretty much half of the, the sphere surrounding the pellet. And now that we've seen kind of what's happened at NIF with their attempts to get um, fusion to start there, that we need a more symmetrical uh, arrangement of these beams in order to get the pellet to compress. Okay. And that's not something that we figured out how to address yet with Daedalus. What are some other possibilities for fusion propulsion? Well, one of the ones that's interesting right now is uh, one that uses um, a different kind of pellet that's more easily ignited. Um, the way that this works is that there's a little hole in the end of the pellet and you hit it with one big uh, laser beam and it ignites it straight from the interior without having to have a whole bunch of lasers all the way around it. And so, you know, provided you can get the pellet into the pro proper orientation to hit it, um, this looks a lot more plausible than what they used on Daedalus. There's another uh, fusion system that our own Rob Adams did a presentation on last year called Z-Pinch that also looks interesting and plausible. So those are probably two of the biggest uh, fusion-based propulsion systems. And how does that one work? Um, that one's a magnetic confinement uh, system where the uh, fuel is going through a magnetic tube basically and then you okay. twist the magnetic field and crunch it down with the magnetic field. So. Uh, the advantage to that one is that it's not, um, you know, there's not like a pellet that you're trying to hit or anything like that. Mm -hmm. There's actually a tube of fuel, so that also seems a little more workable. And they're both in process of trying to figure it out? Yes, they're both under active research, so okay. that's good.